Will the price of Ethereum crash to $750 as wallet activity on the Ethereum blockchain plunges to an all-time low? Ready? Let's dive deep. Ethereum daily active addresses plunges to a four-month low. The drop in Ethereum's daily active addresses comes as Ethereum price flatlines, rising fears about a potential drop ahead. The Ethereum blockchain has witnessed a substantial drop in daily active addresses over the last four months, raising fears about more downside for Ethereum price in the coming weeks. The stagnant Ethereum price spooks investors. The number of Ethereum active addresses dropped to 152,000 on October 1st, its lowest level since June according to the data provided by Sentiment. The plunge showed fewer unique Ethereum addresses interacting with the network. Interestingly, the drop comes after Ethereum's 80% plus correction from its November 2021 high around $4,850. The coincidence could mean two things. Ethereum users decided to leave the network and or pause their interaction with the blockchain network after the market's downturn. The sentiment analysis blamed the drop on weak-handed sentiment traders who dropped out of the market during a bearish or stagnant phase. Disinterest among investors is also visible across Ethereum-based investment funds. These funds witnessed outflows worth $3.9 million in the week ending in October 14th, according to CoinShare's latest weekly report. And we can see here out of all big layer one blockchains, Ethereum is the only one with negative flows by asset. So what I actually think is happening here is I think that these unelected government bureaucrats, meaning Gary Gensler, this public official, this regulator that I didn't vote for, that you didn't vote for, is single-handedly destroying innovation. And I think it's just the people are choosing to not interact with the Ethereum blockchain. Every one of these regulators that comes and puts regulations in place, if we, the people, the general people, just withdraw our assets, we choose to not interact with that ecosystem, it's gonna give the bit of middle finger because when the Ethereum team starts realizing that Gary Gensler and all these regulators have destroyed their blockchain, and we can use that as the shiny example of what not to do. I think that there's no better time that we, the people, needing need to choose and say, hey, we're choosing to not interact with this ecosystem. We don't want our funds to be censored. We don't want to be interacting with an ecosystem that the SEC or government people, they can freeze your wallet address. They can freeze all of the assets in your wallet if by chance you interact with an ecosystem or a wallet address that is on their blacklist. So let's pull up this article. This is effective crypto regulations through blacklisting. And I just want to pull up this one article right here. The OFAC added Bitcoin addresses used by two Iranian nationalists in a ransomware scheme to their specifically designated nationals and blacklisted personnel list effectively forbidding any Bitcoin users in the US to interact with these addresses. Blacklisting Bitcoin addresses is however not effective. In contrast, the banking system where a single account is tied to a person's identity Bitcoin addresses can be created anonymously in unlimited quantities and without central oversight. This renders address-based blacklist largely ineffective. Criminals can create fresh addresses to receive funds, which cannot be easily linked to existing addresses. A static blacklisting of addresses, as done by the FOC, can easily be evaded by transferring funds to a newly generated address. Sensor Ethereum blocks hit the 51% threshold over the past 24 hours. The Ethereum blockchain reached a new censorship milestone Friday with 51% of the blocks produced over the last 24 hours followed the U.S. Treasury Department's Office for Foreign Asset Control, the OFAC compliance recommendations. With that, the majority of blocks over the past few days were delivered by relays that screened out transactions associated with Tornado Cash, a service that mixes transactions to make them anonymous to comply with OFAC after it banned Americans from using the mixing protocol. Minimal extractable value, the MEV, refers to rewards that block builders and validators receive from reordering transactions within a block. Flash Bots, an Ethereum-based research and development team, has been working on ways to curb the potential harm of the MEV execution by building MEV Boost a piece of software that allows validators to request blocks from a network of builders via a middleman called a relay. So I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments. I personally think that regulators are destroying all innovation in the crypto industry. Crypto is supposed to be for the little guy. It was supposed to be a way for the general public, me and you, to choose where we wanna preserve our wealth 
and what type of investments we want to make. Now these regulators are determining what assets people can build, how they can build them, how they can censor transactions, and they're turning the entire crypto industry into a regulated dumpster fire, which is not anything that I want to be associated with. So this is why I've chose to remove all of my funds from proof of stake blockchains, especially ones like Ethereum. Everything that Ethereum stands for has gone away. It is now centralized. They are now throttling transactions. They are now censoring transactions. They are now blacklisting wallet addresses, which means that they can now freeze your funds. So if you guys want your funds to get frozen, if you guys want to be a part of this dumpster fire, if you guys want to support this regulated garbage, by all means, keep using Ethereum. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you think.